On the morning of February 4th, 1912, a man named Franz Reichelt stepped out onto the edge of the Eiffel Tower. He paused there for about 40 seconds as if he were gathering his courage. Then, he threw himself into the air. He didn't intend to die. This wasn't an Eiffel Tower suicide attempt. Instead, Franz Reichelt had set out to prove that his prized invention, a bizarre parachute suit, could deliver him safely to the ground. Reichelt had grown up in the wild early days of aviation. His life was filled with news stories about audacious flying machines and bold pilots who dared launch them into the sky. But he also noted, with growing horror, that many of these pilots died in the process. So the young Reichelt, a tailor by trade, believed he could help. He became convinced that he could design a parachute suit that would allow pilots to survive short falls. Though he dove into his new project with unflagging enthusiasm, Reichelt's early prototypes largely failed. Dummies that he tossed out the window of its fifth-story Parisian apartment simply plummeted to the earth. On one occasion, Reichelt even tested out one of his parachutes himself and broke his leg after it failed to slow his fall. But Reichelt was adamant that he could ultimately get his invention to work. He just needed the right height from which to jump. He soon became convinced that a triumphant leap from the Eiffel Tower would not only provide the right conditions for success, but would also make him famous in the process. And so, as his friends begged him to change his mind, news cameras began rolling, and concerned onlookers watched from below. Reichelt confidently climbed the tower's platform on that fateful February morning. For a long time, he hesitated perhaps finally confronting the doubt and fear he'd been pushing to the back of his mind ever since he first embarked on his dream project. Then, Franz Reichelt jumped and fell like a stone to his death. We're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All That's Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm all this interesting staff writer, Kalina Fraga. Today, we're going to Paris in 1912 for the story behind the fatal fall of Franz Reichelt. Born in Austria in 1878, Franz Reichelt came of age as humans first began to take to the skies. In 1903, the Wright brothers conducted their first powered flight, sparking an aviation revolution that swept across the globe. But Reichelt watched the development of airplanes with great concern. Alongside the triumph of early flight came the tragedy of fatal crashes. Reichelt was, in the words of one French newspaper, moved by stories of airplane accidents. Soon, he became convinced that he could help. Though by the 1910s, Reichelt was a successful tailor living in Paris, he believed he could put his skills to better use and began to design a parachute suit. Reichelt envisioned something light enough for a pilot to wear as they flew and hard enough to save their life if they had to jump. According to the French newspaper Le Gaulois, he talked about his plans with his largely Austrian clients. During fittings, he told them how his parachute suit would make flying so safe that even the most nervous could take to the skies. My new invention is like nothing else, he told Le Petit Journal. It's constructed, basically, half in waterproof fabric and half in silk. Thanks to a system of rods and belts that one can control, the parachute deploys during a fall and will save a pilot's life. But although Reichelt had some early success with his invention in 1910, dummies that he threw from his window floated easily to the ground, he needed to make his suit more wearable for it to be effective. To his chagrin, Reichelt's suit failed in attempt after attempt. His dummies, wearing different versions of his parachute suit, all dropped straight to the ground. The Aero Club de France, which was founded in 1898 to encourage aerial locomotion, even told Reichelt directly that his invention wouldn't work when he tried to present it. Club members warned him that he would break his neck because the device was too weak. 
Undeterred, Reichelt continued. He became convinced that the problem with his invention was not the invention itself, but his methods of testing it. Reichelt believed he simply hadn't been testing his suit from a great enough height. The suit has not had time to make contact with the air, he said. If I had 50 or 100 meters instead of 25, the results would be wonderful. I will prove it one day. That's exactly what he set out to do. When the Aero Club announced a prize for a parachute design, Reichel resolved to finally prove his detractors wrong by testing it at the Eiffel Tower. For over a year, Franz Reichelt lobbied the Parisian police department to let him test out his parachute from the Eiffel Tower. Finally, they relented. But Reichelt surprised everyone when he showed up at the Eiffel Tower around 7 a.m. on February 4, 1912. He was wearing his parachute suit. He'd left his dummies at home. To the shock of the crowd, which included Reichelt's friends, the Paris police, French journalists, and curious onlookers, he announced that he intended to jump himself and not use a dummy as they'd assumed. We even believed he could succeed, the Gaulois wrote the next morning. After all, when it comes to aviation, aren't we all used to audacity and to surprises? Another French newspaper, Le Matin, recorded a slightly different mood following Reichelt's announcement. They wrote, among the spectators, which included some photographers and some journalists, only he seemed happy. Everyone thought he would kill himself. Smiling, Reichelt explained how he would return to the Earth from the first platform of the Eiffel Tower. Reichelt's friends, too, tried to dissuade him from jumping. As he climbed to the first platform of the Eiffel Tower, which stood 57 meters or about 200 feet off the ground, they told him it was too windy and, at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, far too cold. Meanwhile, one man, a fellow parachutist, told Reichel that the drop was not high enough for his parachute suit to deploy. I intend to prove the worth of my invention, Reichel told his terrified friends. You are going to see how. My parachute will give your arguments the most decisive of denials. By 8.22 a.m., Reichel had reached his position. Abiento, he said to his friends. See you soon. He stepped up onto a small table and tore up a page from a newspaper. Reichelt let the scraps go and studied the direction of the wind. Then he looked down at the earth. For forty long seconds, Reichelt hesitated. A camera recorded his teetering movements on the edge of the tower as another waited on the ground to capture his triumphant landing. The cameraman watched him go pale, wrote Le Matin. It watched him recoil instinctively. He studied the violence of the wind. He hesitated. Mr. Reichelt stood on the table, declared Le Petit Parisien. Was he seized by dizziness, by paralyzing fear? Text accompanying footage of Reichelt's jump put things more plainly. As if he sensed his horrible fate, a card read before showing Reichelt's jump, the doomed inventor hesitated a long time before jumping into the air. Finally, as the crowd watched below, Reichelt gathered his nerves. In one smooth motion, he leaped from the Eiffel Tower and dropped straight to the frozen ground. A great cry instantly rang out from both the crowd on the ground and from Reichelt's friends on the platform. Police rushed to his side, but it was much too late. Franz Reichelt, at the age of 33, was dead. Two seconds later, Le Petit Parisien wrote, In a pitiful wreck, he lay on the icy grass. He fell almost standing. Blood trickled through his mouth, nose, and ears. His right arm and leg were crushed. His skull and back were broken. Death was instant. Reichelt's body was carried away. He'd left a six-inch hole in the ground.
The next day, news of Fran Reichelt's fatal fall spread throughout Paris. Newspapers across the city printed photos of him before his jump, showing off his suit, and pictures of his body suspended in the air in front of the Eiffel Tower shortly before he crashed back to the earth. An inventor who thought he found a parachute found death instead, sighed Le Matin. The inventor was, they said, a victim of his faith. An inventor jumped from the Eiffel Tower and killed himself, explained Le Gaulois. Their article went on to note that we only call great inventors mad geniuses when they succeed. Reichelt deserves only half of this title. Many pointed the finger at the Parisian police, whom they claimed should have stopped Reichelt before he jumped. The police insisted, however, that they had only given Reichelt permission to jump from the Eiffel Tower because they believed he'd do so with dummies. They hadn't expected him to try and jump himself. And to Reichelt's friends, his death came from his desperation to prove his design. He needed to show his invention as quickly as possible, one told Le Gaulois. Patents only last 15 years. He was sure he'd get a sponsor if his jump from the Eiffel Tower succeeded, which is why he was in such a rush to do it. It is possible, though, that Reichelt may have failed in his quest with or without his Eiffel Tower experiment. A continent away, an inventor named Gleb Kotelnikov invented a knapsack parachute around 1911 that successfully did what Reichelt hoped his parachute suit would accomplish. And so, today, Reichelt's legacy lives in not what he invented, nor his noble reasons for trying to create the parachute suit in the first place, but because of his shocking death, which cameras captured for all of eternity. Cameras on the ground, and with him on the platform the Eiffel Tower captured his last moments. They show his pride in showing off his parachute suit when he arrived at the scene. They show his 40-second hesitation as he considers the 200-foot drop. And, finally, the camera lens watches coldly as Reichelt plummets straight to the earth, like Icarus. Today, that footage, which is shocking even 100 years later, has millions of views on YouTube. Reichelt will likely forever be known not for his invention, his courage, or his ambition, but for his hubris. He was dead, the Gulwa said the next day, and there was nothing more to do but carry home the body of this inventor, who had believed, just a few seconds earlier, to finally grasp fortune and glory. Thanks for listening to History Uncovered. I'm History Uncovered's producer, Kit Westneat. If you like the show, help others find us by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And be sure to follow the All That's Interesting and History Revealed pages on Facebook and Real History Uncovered on Instagram. Make sure you don't miss out on the new episodes and subscribe to the History Uncovered podcast. And keep up with our latest stories at allthatsinteresting.com. If you have a question about the show or just want to say hi, feel free to call us at 929-526-3029 or email us at podcast at allthatsinteresting.com. This podcast is part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. Visit airwavemedia.com to listen and subscribe to their other fine shows like Legends of the Old West and Redacted History. Until next time, keep exploring.